In the last episode, much change came to the Takeda and Uesugi clans, as the great Takeda Shingen and Uesugi Kenshin both rose to power during the tumultuous 1540s, forever changing the balance of power in the East. Now, as we enter the 1550s, trouble in the West will lead to the epic battle on the holy island of Miyajima. By the mid-1500s, we can easily see just how drastically and rapidly the map of Japan was changing throughout the chaotic warring years of the Sengoku Jidai, as clans across the country fought endlessly for regional dominance. Some clans came from nothing, yet would in time rise to greatness. Other clans had previously been mighty, yet had in time been subject to a sad and slow decline. Two of the most notable falls from grace being the Yamana and Hosokawa clans, both of which being responsible for the Onin War, which kickstarted Japan's Warring States period almost a century prior. We have already seen how these two once great clans had shrunk over time, and once again another rupture was to occur, this time in the Hosokawa clan. Miyoshi Nagayoshi retainer of the Hosokawa clan had used the last several years to grow the power and influence of his family, and finally, by 1548, he would ultimately cut ties with the Hosokawa. Without the will to bring them back into the fold, the influence of the Hosokawa can now be observed in full decline, as their formerly owned territories began to drift out of their direct control. Though the Hosokawa family would live on, their clan would never again hold the level of prominence it once did in its heyday. Yet as the Hosokawa fell apart, so too did another former regional power in the west, the Ochi clan. In episode 10, The Siege of Gasan Tora, we witnessed the Ochi and Mori clan defeated when they attempted to seize the Amago clan citadel of Gasan Tora. This would cause the Ochi Daimyo, Ochi Yoshitaka, to completely forsake war and instead divert his attention to the blossoming of culture and arts in the Yamaguchi. This infuriated his warmongering retainer, Sue Harukata, along with other retainers. Eventually, in 1551, Sue Harukata would initiate a military coup, surrounding Yoshitaka and forcing him to commit seppuku. Harukata then placed a puppet daimyo, Ochi Yoshinaga, at the head of the clan. Yet really, the Ochi were now firmly in the grip of Harukata. Immediately, tension flared up between Mori Motonari of neighboring Aki province and Harukata, as Motonari had been an ally of Yoshitaka prior to his death at the hands of Harukata. Within three years, by 1554, the two clans would go to war with one another. The first time the two armies would clash would be at Oshikihata, within the Mori territory of Aki. Although the Ochi force numbered twice that of the Mori, Motonari's skillful leadership and knowledge of his own terrain, coupled with the fact that he bribed many of the Ochi samurai to join his side, all allowed him to defeat and rout Harukata's army. Yet, this battle was only a prelude for what was to come. Motonari had drawn the first blood in their conflict, causing Harukata to eagerly plan out a strategy for revenge against the Mori. However, this was exactly what Motonari had hoped for. Knowing that Harukata would jump at the chance to strike back against Motonari, one year later, in 1555, Motonari ordered the construction of a fort on the holy island of Miyajima, although it was then that Motonari abandoned the fort, and made sure that its abandonment was a very well-known fact, publicly lamenting that he could only hope to hold it for so long. 
Once Harukata learned that the island stronghold had been left empty, he immediately launched an army 20,000 strong to secure it, as gaining control of it would allow for a more coordinated invasion of Aki. Motonari simply offered little resistance and allowed Harukata to push into Aki province and to secure the island of Miyajima. However, this is where Motonari's grand plan would come into fruition. A Mori force around 10,000 strong assaulted and retook the castle of Sakura, an essential link to Miyajima, thus cutting the supply line to the island off from the mainland. Motonari then bided his time until a thunderstorm erupted overhead, allowing his army to have good cover for their final attack, calling upon his naval ally Murakami Torayoshi to aid in ferrying his men across to Miyajima. Motonari and his sons Mori Takamoto and Kikawa Motoharu landed to the east, while his third son Kobayakawa Takakage landed to the north of the island. At dawn, the Mori forces would launch a two-pronged assault on the unsuspecting Ochi army. Once battle was joined, Harukata's force would be completely annihilated by the Mori, with Harukata himself committing seppuku in defeat. The death of Sue Harukata sent shockwaves across the west as the Ochi clan reeled in the wake of the Battle of Miyajima. Now, with the Ochi clan drastically weakened, Motonari would spend the next two years devouring their territory, while the Otomo clan worked to secure Buzin on the island of Kyushu. Finally, by 1557, after the suicide of Ochi Yoshinaga, the Mori clan would secure both Nagato and Suo provinces, thus reigning supreme over western Honshu. Having established a true regional power, Motonari retired in favor of his son, Takamoto, that same year, although he would largely retain much authority within the clan until his death in 1571. So, what can we learn? In 1548, having grown increasingly powerful and influential in central Japan, the Miyoshi clan under Miyoshi Nagayoshi would break away from the Hosokawa clan, shattering the Hosokawa ever further. Roughly two years later, another great clan would face internal strife in the west when Sue Harukata, having grown discontent with his master, would rebel against Oshi Yoshitaka in 1551, forcing him to commit seppuku and placing a puppet daimyo in charge of the clan. This would cause tension to rise between the Ochi and the Mori, eventually resulting in the battle of Oshikihata and later Miyajima, where Motonari would trap the Ochi Sue army on the holy island of Miyajima and eradicate them. This allowed the Mori to secure the remaining Ochi territories in western Honshu, becoming the true powerhouse in western Japan. In the next episode, we turn our attention to a civil war in Owari province, which will introduce us to the most important samurai we have encountered thus far, Oda Nobunaga. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.